Hey, Johnny. Let's go, man. Thanks so much for joining me. Hey, hey Yannis. <laughs> yeah, happy to. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Nice to finally meet you. Uh, let's kick it off. Would you like to share some information about your background and how Emotion got started? Yes, for sure. Um, my background is actually as a regular React Knight app developer. Been doing that for many years. Um, but I was also always interested in motion graphics, which Remotion is a tool for. And I started doing it about two years ago just to solve my personal needs because I kind of felt that I would be better at making videos if I wrote it in code um, rather than using a tool like Premiere. So I built it and it got like such a good reception that I've been in a feedback loop ever since. That's that's amazing. And this is a recurring story. And, and I love how I think the best products come from the founders, the creators, personal experience and problem. Um, how did you come to the decision to open source it? So you knew what you wanted for yourself. Um, how did you decide to open source your motion? So open sourcing, I think, is like the easiest way to get something out uh, because then everybody can just uh, run it themselves. Um, you don't need to like make installers and uh, whatnot. Um, so that always felt very natural to me. Um, it's just the easiest way to get it out. But I was also kind of like feeling that this could be a special project for me. So I also put some thought about protecting what I've worked on um, to not give it out completely for free. Um, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> no, thank, thanks for touching upon this and the license and the open core model. And, and this can help, you know, this information can help new people getting started. Uh, how about uh, attracting first contributors or, or users that became contributors? What did that look like for you early on? I think there's no way to force into it. If it, if it happens to you, then you've done something right uh i've just thought about putting it out and people were interested in the project and they came of course you can boost it by giving them a good environment so you should uh give them instructions on how they can contribute what the expectations are um information about the workflow maybe help them personally and we also made a video called how to contribute to Remotion, which, which told the instructions in video form. Excellent. And, and that absolutely helped. And you're doing a phenomenal job with it. Not just the contributors are way many, but I mean, I'm, I'm seeing your Discord, your machine gunning contributions all day and merging PRs. The acceptance criteria are always very clear. So I really appreciate seeing that from, from a little bit of a distance. Um, Let's let's touch upon again on the on the part of uh, monetizing the project, choosing the license, and how did you navigate these oftentimes tricky, you know, waters? Yeah, yeah. So we have a very special license. Um, part of it was like copied from the MIT license, and we we put in a clause which requires that companies pay for remotion. And my thinking behind that was that I don't mind uh, people using it for free or e even uh, make commercial tools with it. I think that's all cool and fun, um, but it would be a bummer if a big company comes and they did come eventually and they would just take it completely for granted. And the only thing that I would be left behind with are GitHub issues. And and so far with the decisions made, you know, you're, you're happy with how things are coming and the commercial interest as well? I am happy with it. Um, this class gives us good protection and still yields many benefits of open source, um, building in the open, getting contributions, um, making it very available for people to fork and hack on it. 
um, as well as some future prospect. Um, we uh, we are not burnt out, but um, still motivated to make it bigger. Absolutely, and 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 as you know, people and organizations pool, and the community is growing. There's all this extra work. So now, as effectively also a company uh, that that needs to grow, how are you navigating supporting remotion financially, potentially growing the team? How are you thinking about this? Yeah. Yeah. So, I am not the type who wants to grow at every cost. Um, but we did get um financing from uh react enthusiasts um certain angels rather than a vc which i think was a good compromise because for about 16 months or so i would just use my personal savings and uh, just put everything into remotion and try to monetize it uh, start getting our first customers but um especially um living here in Zurich, Switzerland is it's quite expensive and we didn't yet come to the point where it is financially sustainable. So I hope in the future that we can make money of, of customers directly. Um, but in November we have raised a financing round which will uh, get us through all of 2023 and even a bit further. Great. So you basically bootstrap the project, put your own money into it in time. And then once there was some pool building up, you just secured some runway a little over a year with a little bit of angel um, help. And uh, we'll see where that uh, takes remotion. I, I, that, that sounds very, very sensible. And, and now how, is, how does your day-to-day -day look like, you know, balancing everything? Are you still kind of like just building product all the time or, you know, how are the conversations going with, potentially uh, potential customers, bigger orgs. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah, I'm doing a little bit uh, of everything. Um, usually in the morning, I'll check what kind of messages are coming in. Um, this could be GitHub issues, uh, messages on Discord, tweets or emails, of course. And then uh, some days are there's a little volume and I get to building products straight away um, and other days are just lots of uh, of communication and also we, we try to be present on social media so making a lot of content for it is also a big part of how I am spending my time actually absolutely and i think you're really good at it you're really great at it the whole community and you're eating your own food every day while doing it so that's that's excellent would, would you like to briefly talk about uh, github unwrapped and th how that sort of like played out for you guys because it's very exciting yeah 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 totally i mean it's just something amazing happens to us uh, in this project um so i, I did a hackathon uh, in 2021, at the end of 2021, um, just came up with the idea of creating a video for every GitHub user, um, sort of to promote Remotion, but also to go through this dog fooding process um, and to validate to myself that we can build cool applications with Remotion. And it was uh, a much smaller success back then but it got the interest of GitHub. And to my surprise, they were delighted and very approachable. And this is how I got the opportunity to work with them together for the 2022 version. And I'm really proud of how we all pulled together um, to make this a relatively big success. So. Um, in numbers, we rendered about 90,000 personalized videos, um, which is a very large amount. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. And and how are you personally, because, you know, the, the project is also over 15,000 stars. And um, I was speaking the other day with Peer from cal.com. And I think he told me that only about a thousand projects worldwide crossed that threshold. 
Um, so, you know, has that changed something in terms of how the project is covered or like, you know, maybe people trying to come and support a little more your experience of it and, and validation? Or is it just like a vanity, you know, metric, which I, I don't think it is. Ooh, yeah. How do you, what are your thoughts? To, to some degree, it is a vanity metric um, since some projects like are more are more likely to gather stars because they have a cool readme or, or get some promotion. Um, you would see like repos with 30,000 stars getting less actual usage than repos with 500 stars that does happen but i mean you will not, not get to 15000 stars if it's completely without merit <laughs> um how are you managing the work at the moment are you the only maintainer and core developer or you you have more people helping you on the team right now uh for software engineering yeah so we are actually a team of 3 it's uh me and my co-founder um, he's not technical, but taking some beginner JavaScript courses um, now. So hopefully he can help me in the future. And last summer, we've got an intern from the university and I've been mentoring him. And now he's uh, also employed at Remotion and helping me a little bit while he is studying. That's uh, our team at the moment. I love it. Did, did you finish university? Did you take time off? I I finished my bachelor. Um, I already knew before that I wanted to do something practical, but I I still finished. Um, for for the master's degree though, I I did not have the patience. Um, <laughs> this was too slow and too theoretical for me, so that's that's when I dropped out. <laughs> Um, so I, I'd like to ask you a little bit about bounties. So you have used them in the past and now with Algora, you were actually, Remotion was the first open source project to try them. So thank you very much for that. Um, why did you decide to employ this tool? What's the, the job to be done? Yeah. So bounties for GitHub repos are very interesting because I feel like they, it can be a very efficient tool for both the people who put a bounty on and, and those who get it. It's completely different than employing somebody or hiring a freelancer where you automatically get a lot of overhead and it's just about time spent. So um, bounties, it's, I don't want to do everything with bounties because I, I also think that in some cases it's important. There's a lot of value in building a team, but for like a GitHub issue is this atomic unit of a problem and allowing you to put a cash bounty on it to solve this specific problem without any overhead and make it available to any person who has this domain specific problem, I find very interesting. And we've been experimenting a lot with putting cash bounties on it. And the majority of experiences were very positive with that. And I think we are now further than if we did not do that. That's, that's phenomenal to hear. Uh, and, and, and a pleasure to see it, to see it in action. Uh, we've we've chatted, you know, briefly over Discord uh, about use cases of bounties. This is actually the first time we speak in real time, which is awesome. Uh, so, you know, we, we've we've seen you and your teammates creating and rewarding bounties in a Remotion uh, repository. Uh, we also briefly touched upon maybe some community members that would like to add bounties to issues, uh, or potentially a, a customer of Remotion that needs some extra support. Uh, with their custom solution and use to get a community member to assist. Um, are there any sort of like thoughts at the moment about how these things could play out? We're also in experimentation mode, of course. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on this? 
I I think it could make sense since companies using a framework they are often pretty much very dependent and they have a specific use case and it can very be- easily happen that they need a very specific feature to be added to the framework so willing to pay for this feature to be added is something that is very plausible. At Remotion, we try to, first of all, be design the software in a very generic way to avoid um, being trapped in, in, in the, in, with the software and having no escape patches. We try to avoid that in, in the first place. And smaller requests, we, we try to implement straight away. So I think this would only happen if it were like a bigger transition of the code base, where I'm also a bit more doubtful about the bounties. Um, since you don't want um, a random person in uh, air quotes to to work on on this issue, so we have not yet done this. But if the scenario is happening, then yeah, let's give it a try. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, it can vary from product to product, community to community, but you know, it's ultimately something interesting that that might be playing out. And uh, I wanted to ask you, in, in starting to, to, you know, as a, as a builder in this space, was there someone that you looked up to, followed their advice, uh, anything you took to heart? And, and then, of course, afterwards, I'm going to ask you about your own. Uh, but, but yeah, like, was there any figure that you appreciated in your journey? Yeah, so when... I was just following the open source space. Um, there's this guy called Sindre Sorhus. Um, he made like literally 1,000 different JavaScript modules. Some of them like ridiculously tiny with like two lines of code. But his idea was just that, hey, um, everything can be composed together. Um, for me, he really uh, was the first one to bring this idea of npm packages as lego blocks into into real life and he was also one of the first ones that i saw um getting enough sponsors so that he could do it full time uh which a few years back this was very special and pretty amazing so I think he was one of the inspirations. Um, now there are lots of people who do this model, actually. And another, if I can shout out another open source project that I follow and just love how they are progressing. It's a Serenity OS. It is an open source operating system. They are literally building something something in between Linux and Windows and Mac OS from scratch, like every line is written by hand and they put so much love into it. And they also made, uh, the maintainer, Andreas, makes YouTube videos where they, they are very educational, but also it's very interesting to follow um, and, and be, and I am amazed by the progress that they are making. So this is one project that I find aspiring now, inspiring nowadays. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and yourself uh, in your journey so far, uh, any any lessons you might like to share? Uh, you know, as a, as a founder, as a creator, where you put your time, where you don't, what you've seen to work or maybe a pitfall to avoid? Uh, yeah, so... There are, of course, a few technical regrets that 
we have didn't think it would become so big or so complex and I would do it differently nowadays and now we have to do breaking changes but I think this this happens in every project and every maintainer has to learn it by themselves um, and also not every issue that someone opens or every idea that someone brings is a good idea um you you know it feels bad to reject it or if they even make a pull request with where they put working and made a certain feature to reject that is is heartbreaking but you know best where you want to take the project and if that is not incompatible then you you need to be uh, the heartbreaker and deny that request thank thanks for uh, touching on this and it can get a little sensitive it can get a little hard for most people you know and once it happens like maybe a few times any any, any sort of like additional note on this in terms of how to set expectations properly with a note in your readme, your contributor guide or something towards that effect that you think works well? Can, uh, this question yeah. I did not... As in like, do you, do you tell people in advance, you know, before they contribute that, uh, hey, you know what, it's up to my discretion and the teams to decide what's going to happen or not? Or how, how do you smooth that out? Because, you know, again, it's hard, but it's a reality of of it. it can be another way oh yeah um communica communication is key um i think if just a pull request comes out of the blue um maybe it's it was not so good by the person who has submitted it um because how could i um have intervened before and told them hey i would uh, not uh accept this but yeah try to in in the github issues um make a list of issues that you would like to have and uh then people might also see that what they are working on might conflict with another future idea and in your documentation try to describe the architecture and your reason behind certain decisions uh, as well as possible. Mm -hmm. I I suppose one could also make a document of what is in scope and what is not. And that would certainly help cut that type of wasted energy down. Thanks for covering that. Would you like to highlight some remotion metrics um, to you know to serve in terms of the yeah the community, the activity? Um. Hmm, some remotion metrics um sure so i i have to think about what what am i what am i most proud of so i i think get using github stars as the main metric oh yeah our open source project has made it far it has uh, that many github stars that's probably not the the best way to go for it. The the one thing that I'm most proud of is that there are around fifty companies who have adopted Remotion for their products, which is actually the biggest validation for us and also some big companies that we were able to collaborate with GitHub and that we were able to collaborate with Fireship. Those are two things that I am super proud of and I think are some of our best achievements rather than saying a number. No, that is, that is phenomenal. And I agree, that's the, the loveliest part of it all. And, uh, you know, I, I wish you to further heights uh, on this front, there's a long way to go still. Um, well, that's amazing. Any any other surprises building, um, you know, an open source product and the community, something that you could never imagine before, but uh, 
you know, here it is. Yeah, I mean, when I started, I kind of came in with this, I know best attitude. Mm -hmm. um, I I felt like, okay, I can, I was expecting to build it out mostly on my own and did not expect in the end to take in so many opinions and more more often than I expected I was proven wrong um, about a about an assumption how something works um, that the, it's turned out to be a bug when I was completely sure there wouldn't be one I'm I mean, every time a bug report comes in, the question asks itself: Is it a uh, is it a bug in remotion, or is it the fault of the person who has submitted the issue? And, and in in general, all the things that can go wrong, it's uh, it's amazing. Um, people use tools in so like the different operating system versions editors, um, other tools that they want to combine it with, um, tools like TypeScript and their configurations. It's like if you would plot this into a matrix, you would be surprised by how many different combinations of setups there are that people are using your tool with. So I was uh, surprised by that complexity. But I'm also glad that helped me recognize it and uh, hopefully also adjust to make it compatible with more of these more of these setups absolutely is there a, is there a next milestone or something in your roadmap that you're looking forward to and you know, would like to share yeah uh, right now there are two technical things that we would like to achieve so right now the it also has something to do with the tools so right now it is assumed that you will use remotion in conjunction with webpack and with a headless browser and use that screenshot feature to make a video but so many people have asked about hey can we also use it only on the server? Can we use it with Deno? Can we use it with Bun? Can we only use it in the in the server? Uh, there is an idea floating around that instead of taking a screenshot, we one renders um, the HTML on the server using a library called Satori. So we are experimenting with Rust and more ideas in that direction. So I'm working on making it even less opinionated and hopefully release a new major version, which is even more pluggable and can be used in more ways. And the other thing that we want to do soon, um, or I say next step, is that we want to build a render button. So right now you render by typing in a command into the command line and there are many flags but uh, we have prototyped a UI for for our uh, Remotion preview for our editor with which you can directly generate a video. And it seems like it will be much, um, much more convenient. So we are building that out. And right now in our code base, there are like 40 to-dos that we just want to polish these things and get it right. And to get that out, is also one of our next steps. Amazing, phenomenal. Those things came from the community's, you know, feedback and opening issues, or was it something that you know you always knew has to come happen? Probably the former. Or to, to be honest, I think the community as a whole has a has not such a good understanding of what we are doing. There are lots of misconceptions out there that I would say are out of scope. Let's clear um, them. Let's let's give the gist of it and what's the core to focus right now. Yeah. 
Um, so actually, this this idea was 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 still my own. Um, so the render button idea is my own idea. I think nobody described it specifically, um, but there's a more generic version of free motion where we will also have some layer approach. This was very much based on on user feedback, and uh, it, that influenced my decision to build it a lot. Mm -hmm. And 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 I mean both apply to usability, but one could also you know maybe unlock more people using it, you know integrating it into their uh, products, their experiences. Um, that makes sense. Something that I'd like to start for the first time is to ask you for a question for the next founder that uh, joins us in this series. Uh, is something you'd like to ask? I don't know who it's gonna be. Uh, neither do you, but we'll find out. Okay, I'm not sure yet who's it's gonna be. But I, I want to know from them why did they decide to make their tool open source? That is the fundamental question that, uh, like the the most burning question that any open source founder should be uh, asked. And yeah, what what their plan is um, after they have made their decision. <laughs> awesome, awesome, and uh, and you know, like I'll be sure to make a compilation of people touching on this on this specific question. Is there, lastly, any at all sort of like element, you know, your your personal life and personal experience doing this in terms of managing yourself and you know your emotions and 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 those those things? Like, is this something that you've learned from your journey so far? You'd like to to touch on, uh, maybe a pitfall to avoid or just, you know, from the more mental standpoint as well, your approach. Yeah, so first of all, Remotion has really changed my life and I'm super fulfilled doing doing it and now I'm doing it full time, I'm putting my whole energy into it. And in the meanwhile, it has like tipped over in that the amount of feedback and messages and opportunities that I get uh, outweigh what I can do. So obviously I prioritize and I say no to people, mm -hmm. but like getting so many messages and nudges um, every day, to be honest, puts me a bit under uh, un under stress and makes me very nervous like looking at the phone all the time and losing focus a bit so one of my priorities going forward must be to get that a bit uh, under control um to so i can uh, chill out more and yeah, mm -hmm. make better decisions. I'm I'm not gonna pretend I got this figured out. It's uh still very very crazy to me. Thank thanks for this perspective. Really appreciate uh hearing that and and, and you know not enough people uh, talk talk about those things. And it seems like an outlet for you is also exercise. So that you have a treadmill right at your office and you know you're typing and you're like on it. It's, it's pretty pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't use that, but I like to go uh, running outside, and I can definitely recommend that. It's a, it's a great way to uh, clear your head, and get, get your, get more leveled, and get, yeah, your head straight. Mm -hmm. um, as a, as a closing, would you like to give us sort of like just the, the boom snippet of uh, remotion, and then people would like to get started. Uh, what they should do yeah for sure so now you've heard a lot about remotion um remotion i think is a great tool if you know react and you would like to become uh, if you would like to use your creativity to put things on a canvas and animate stuff um so to get started with remotion you can simply type in npm in its video and we have a number of templates um, for pros and also for beginners, and a lot of a lot of uh, resources. 
so that you can start making your first animation. Um, I think it's it will be one of the times that you have the most fun using React, um, animating stuff and making things move. So uh, give it a try. And if you make something, then let us know. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. And we'll make sure to cook up the highlights of this interview also with Remotion and show people some flair with it. Uh, thank you so much, Joy, for doing this with me. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thanks, Abel, for the opportunity and also for Algora. Um, I think we've used it again today. And um, yeah, we we are now pretty, pretty convinced about it, I must say. Um, Thank you so much. Works uh, works very well, and I don't know with the with the Bounty API in the future, maybe we can do interesting stuff with that as well. Absolutely, really appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much, and and it's been it's been phenomenal to to work together. Uh, so until <laughs> until next time, Johnny. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much as well, and uh, yeah, looking forward to when it uh, goes out. Awesome. All right. <laughs> See you later.